Hello, Pat the Sound Guy here. Welcome back to my channel. We have a new show for today about USB sticks and Linux. As most of you well know, I am a big fan of Linux. I use Linux on a daily basis to do a lot of my daily computing tasks. I don't use Windows all that much these days for that stuff. So today we're gonna to talk about how to use a USB stick as a hard drive and we're gonna install Linux to the USB as an installation, not just a live boot. So if you ever wonder how to do it, here's an easy way. It requires a little bit of messing with the computer, but that is what it is. So if you wanna try it, let's get to it. Here we are over at my test bench for computers. What are we gonna need for this? First of all, we need some USB sticks. And we need a live boot USB stick. This is what we're gonna use for that. This was a promotional item, this was free. Someone gave it to me. It was a, let's just say it was a silicone bracelet with a USB stick in it. So this was free. It's eight gig. It's not as crucial for the USB stick for your live boot. As long as it works as a USB stick, you're good to go for that. As long as it's large enough for the live boot. So that's an eight gig live boot. With Zorin 16, the latest version of Zorin Linux. That's the distribution I've been using lately to make this work. It's very simple. Next, we need USB three USB sticks to install to. Do not try this with a USB 2 USB stick. It will not work. I spent a year and a half and hours and hours and hours and hours failing every time because I was using the wrong USB sticks. These are very inexpensive for these good USB sticks. I buy these SanDisk guys at Costco for two for 20 bucks. You can't go wrong. You may want larger USB sticks if you're going to do some more uh, computing where you need lots of storage space, but I found that a 64 gig is a good start I can put a lot of retro games on there, a uh, pretty good decent amount of data to work with. So there you go. There's our USB sticks that we're gonna install to. Obviously, the next thing you're gonna need for this process is a computer. You need 64-bit processor, two, four, eight gig of RAM. It's not really that crucial. This computer came out of the recycle pile. It was basically free. It's gonna do the job for us. A uh, laptop will do the job too, but the key thing you must remember if you have a hard drive installed in the machine you're gonna use for this process, you must disconnect the hard drive. This is a big deal. If you have anything installed on the hard drive internal in the machine and you do not disconnect it, you will hose the boot. Master boot record will go bye-bye and it will not boot. Your data will still be there, but you'll, or may not be if you overwrite it by accident, you may, not, may lose all your data. So the trick is you have to disconnect the hard drive in the laptop or desktop. Laptops can be fairly easy. Most of the time it's a bunch of screws on the bottom. You pull the bottom off the laptop and off you go. You can pull that hard drive, flip it back over and start on the process. So this guy here, we have a SATA cable. We just have to disconnect. We don't even have to disconnect the power to the hard drive. Just find the SATA cable. So the SATA cable goes through here. There it is there. Pop, and out it goes. And that is it. There is that cable. So hard drive is disconnected. We can start by rebooting the machine. We need our USB stick with our live boot on it. So here's our free USB stick. File that in there. Now there is a couple different ways to make most machines boot from USB. The HPs all usually are F9 while it boots and it'll get into a menu to select whether it'll boot from a USB stick or the hard drive internally. Usually there's a choice of a menu. Uh, Asus machines, usually it's escape. You press when it boots up. Uh, some machines like my Lenovo laptop is F12, I believe. Sometimes you may have to go into the BIOS settings and enable USB boot. A few things you gotta do with that. So here we are in an HP machine, it's an elite desk. So it's gonna be F9. We put our USB stick with our live boot on there. We fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. Fire it up. Please let me know in the comments below if you know what YouTuber that is from. Just a little fun thing. So here we go. We're gonna fire up our distribution of Linux to install. Next step. Here we are with our Zorn Linux. So basically, try or install Zorn OS. Off we go, press enter. Here we are at the welcome screen. Pretty self-explanatory. You can try Zorn OS or install Zorn OS. Most of the distributions that you can do this with are very similar. They all have the same kind of installer. 
So I usually tend to go with the try option. That way it boots into the full operating system so we can do exploration into the OS, see how it works for us, play with it a little bit, that kind of thing. And here we are, a fully operational OS. Looks pretty similar to Mac or Windows or anything like that. Next step is drop in our USB stick along with our live boot stick. This becomes our hard drive. We go install Zorin OS. This is one of the simpler parts of the whole process here. We just double click on our install Zorin OS 16 and we wait and up comes the installer. So of course this is pretty self-explanatory. Start with English because, well, I speak English. <laughs> Keyboard layout, US uh, English works for me. You can download your updates to the OS, and you can also, uh, I always click this, it's all third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware, this is very helpful. You don't have to do the download updates, this can actually make your installation faster. And you can just do the uh, update when you feel you want to. So for this install, we will download the updates later. Simply click. Yes, we want to unmount those partitions. And here we go. Erase disk install Zorn OS. Pretty self-explanatory. Install now. Yes, we want to write those changes to disks. And away it goes. Yes, I'm in Halifax. Pick a name. Well, since this is a USB stick, and we're not really concerned about security for this, it's just a test. I'm just gonna call it USB. And since I'm not really concerned about calling it what the computer is called, I'm just gonna call it computer USB. Choose a password, and we'll choose a password. And you can require a password to log in. If you're gonna carry this around, I would highly suggest you have a decent password just to make sure that someone picks it up that your data is not easily accessible by the average person if they realize you can boot this. And off it goes. All done installing. So at this point, we're going to continue testing because I have screen capture software running and doing a recording. So we'll continue testing so I can shut that off. But normally you can say restart now and try out your new installation on the USB stick. Well, there you go. That wasn't so hard now, was it? A small disclaimer though, please do this at your own risk. There is that slight chance if you forget to disconnect the hard drive that you could lose some data, corrupt something. So please, Take the time, disconnect the hard drive, follow the instructions, and have fun with it. Now you have something you can boot up and work in, and all your settings will stay the way you want them. You have something for an emergency in case Windows decides to die, or your hard drive dies. At least you have something you can boot up from, and you can be ready to go in a matter of less than a minute. So next video, we're going to go over how to make this USB stick also be a storage drive as well as the bootable installation. So stay tuned for that and remember subscribe, thumbs up, and as always rock on and we'll see you on the next one.